Welcome to the E-Academy. In today's episode, we will present the RK series radio controllers working in the 433 MHz frequency band. These are universal modules that allow you to control various devices connected to the relay output by using key fobs. A single controller of the RK series can handle up to 1024 key fobs, and each key fob button can be programmed individually, as may be required by a given user. Therefore, each user can have a key fob that supports different functions. We will tell you more about the key fobs themselves later in this episode. As for the application of controllers, they can be used, for example, to open gates, wickets, doors, raise lower arm barriers, bollards, parking posts, open fully, partially or close windows, lower, raise roller blinds, shutters, open, close curtains on motorized curtain rods, lower, raise projection screens, switch lighting on, off, start sprinklers, or call for help when the need arises. In addition to the aforementioned applications, radio controllers can be used together with alarm systems, which greatly facilitates their daily operation. You can use a key fob, among other things, to arm or disarm the system, clear alarm, or start the entry delay time. The RK family of controllers includes four models, RK1K, RK2K, RK4K, and RK4K SMA. They differ in the number of channels, or in other words, the available relay outputs. How many outputs are supported by a given driver is shown in its name, and so you can have one, two or four outputs at your disposal. Stability of radio link performance in a wide temperature range, high sensitivity and immunity to interference signals are provided by a new radio circuit, the SDR chipset. In the case of radio devices, the antenna is an indispensable element. The first three models of controllers come with the receiving antenna integrated on the PC board. The fourth one is provided with an SMA connector for external antenna operating in the 433 MHz frequency band. The option to use an external antenna will be very useful, especially where the controller is to be installed in a location where the radio signal coming from the key fobs may be too weak. For example, if your model is to be installed in a basement or inside the metal casing of an arm barrier, the antenna connected to it should be installed using the antenna cable at a place which can be easily reached by the radio signal. If this is the case, you must prepare the controller enclosure by cutting a hole or a slot for the cable in it. Let's go back to the relay outputs. The rated current of a single output is 1000 milliamperes. Three terminals connected with the relay contacts are assigned to each output. Common, normally closed NC and normally open NO. And since we are talking about the controller connectors, let's discuss the rest of them. The first two of them are for power connection. The RK controllers can be powered from both 12 to 24 volts DC, as well as 24 volts AC sources. The next two terminals are NC type tamper outputs, connected to a tamper contact which responds to opening the controller enclosure. They can be connected, for example, to an appropriately configured zone of the control panel so that you can receive information about a possible tamper of the controller. There are two inputs that are intended to be used when the controller is working with the alarm control panel. They are activated by connecting to common ground. The AR input is used to supervise the armed status of the alarm system. It can be connected to the control panel OC type output, programmed so as to signal the armed status. In Satel control panels, this type of output is referred to as the armed status. On the other hand, the control panel OC type output that indicates alarm to be cleared can be connected to the second of the discussed inputs, i.e. AL. The next terminal is LV, an OC type output indicating low key fob battery. If the controller receives a signal from the key fob whose battery is low, the output will be activated. It will turn off automatically after receiving a signal from the key fob in which the battery voltage has not dropped below a specified low level. This output can be connected to an appropriately programmed zone of the control panel so that it can receive information on the low battery status of key fobs. Depending on the options offered by the control panel, the user may be notified, e.g. by SMS, that the battery must be replaced. The last terminal that must be discussed is designated SS. 
It is an output signaling three events in the alarm system. Arming, disarming and disarming combined with alarm clearing. Signaling takes place by means of short pulses and can be used, for example, to control a signaling device. One pulse, arming. Two pulses, disarming. Four pulses, disarming and or alarm clearing. The SS output is activated if the state of AR or AL inputs changes within four seconds of receiving a transmission from the key fob. There is also a two-coloured LED on the controller PCB. When its light is solid green, it means power is connected to the controller. After receiving a transmission from a key fob with good battery, the LED light turns red for a moment. When the LED is blinking red, a transmission was received from the key fob whose battery voltage has dropped too low. When the controller enclosure is closed, the two-colour LED is visible outside. In the right part of the electronics board, next to each relay, you can find a set of pins designated as mode. They are used to set the operating mode of the relay outputs. There are three options to choose from. If there is no jumper placed across the pins, the output will work in bistable mode, i.e. each time you press the key fob button, the output status will change to the opposite one. Now the second case. Let's short the left pin with the middle one. When the jumper is on, the output works as monostable. After receiving a signal from the key fob, it is activated for a program time, after which it will turn off by itself. However, if during the countdown someone presses the button activating this output, its cutoff time will be counted again. The last, third option is pulse mode. It occurs when the right pin is shorted with the middle pin. In this case, the relay output is active as long as the key fob button is pressed. Continuous operation of the output set as a pulse 1 will never last longer than 30 seconds. This is due to the fact that a mechanism that protects the battery against discharging is used in the Satel key fobs. Even if the button is pressed for a longer time, the key fob will stop transmitting after 30 seconds. This protection is most often used when the key fob buttons are accidentally pressed, for example, when carrying the key fob in a pocket or bag. At each relay output, in addition to the pins intended for setting the operating mode, there are buttons designated as PRG. They are used to add and delete key fobs as well as configure the controller. However, the more convenient and faster way to configure controllers is using the RK Soft program. This software enables you to configure most of the controller settings, manage the key fobs, diagnose the module operation, as well as save the settings to a file. Using the RK program, you can also copy the key fobs configuration from one controller to another. This can be used, for instance, where it is necessary to replace a given controller or if you want the same users to be able to use their key fobs to control, for example, entrance gates in several remote premises, let's say branches of one company. While working with the program, the controller connects to a computer via a USB RS converter connected to the RS-232 TTL port on the electronics board. Finally, let's talk about the key fobs themselves. The RK controllers support Satel's key fobs working in the 433 MHz frequency band. These are the MPT-350, T4, T2 and T1 models, as well as the older MPT-300, P4 and P2. For the sake of communication security, transmissions from key fobs are encrypted with a rolling code. Each controller is delivered with two T-series key fobs. According to the number of channels available in the controller, T4, T2 or T1 models are included. As we mentioned at the beginning, each RK controller can handle up to 1024 key fobs, so it will perform well, for example, at the parking lot entrance in a large office building. OK, that's all for this episode. At our next meeting, we will show you how to add key fobs to the controller and configure its settings. Thank you for your attention. Please watch the next eAcademy episodes. See you next time.